When you look at, you know, Brexit, we're again in the next 24 hours on tenterhooks to find out whether there is a deal or there's no deal. Are all banks prepared? And do you think a, a lot of banks have actually left because they worry about passporting and equivalency and they just can't afford to find out at the last minute? Yeah, I think banks are as prepared as they can be. What is very disappointing to us is that when you hear the noises coming out of the negotiations, uh, they mainly uh, have a sort of fishy smell to them, um, or indeed they're about state aid, which is not particularly relevant to us. And what you don't hear much about is the important question of financial sector equivalence. And that would be a very important outcome if we can secure it. And we are hearing nothing about that. So we just don't know whether that will happen or not. As a result, banks have had to prepare for the prospect of no equivalence um, in, the, in the European uh, financial markets. And so we are, you know, we have a subsidiary in the Netherlands through which we can do our business. It's not as convenient as doing it through London, but we are ready for that. So many people have prepared for it. Um, they are suboptimal solutions. And over time, they will produce a drift of business into other European centres from London if we haven't got uh, equivalence in these big, uh, on the big directives, the Market and Financial Instruments Directive, etc. And so it's very disappointing to us that we are hearing nothing. And it doesn't seem as though much negotiating effort is being put into that question, um, which, you know, with nothing against fishermen, and I eat a lot of fish, but nonetheless, the financial sector is a larger share of the economy than uh, is the fishing sector, and yet we hear nothing. I look, Sir Howard, at where we are in banking and the bank earnings stream of, of the United States of America, and there's a wide presumption that the U.S. banks can compete and take market share, take business in continental Europe as well. Can the United Kingdom banks do the same thing? Are, are you guys in a position to be like the American banks and really compete for business on the continent? There are two or three things relevant here. One is, uh, as in many things, the UK is sort of halfway across the Atlantic. Um, and so exactly. if you look at our banks, we're pretty well capitalized, um, better than some uh, banks in Europe. Uh, but. There are several differences going on at the moment. One is that, of course, there is a dividend ban in the UK and in Europe, and there isn't in the US. The US banks have continued to pay out ordinary dividends, and that certainly helped their position in the markets. The second thing is that we in the UK have a handicap as a result of the ring fencing legislation, which requires us to separate our investment banking yeah. operations from our retail and commercial banking operations and imposes a cost of capital penalty on those investment banking operations. And that has had an impact on the market share of UK banks in investment banking markets. And so what you have seen is that US banks have been relentlessly increasing their share of the investment banking wallet in Europe at the expense of some continental European banks who've been perhaps short of capital to deploy in that area, and at the expense of UK banks who have had the ring-fencing penalty. And I think those have been the big drivers of the changes in market share.